The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents... This is your FBI. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Are you taking a vacation this month? Here in the Equitable Life Assurance Society, we like to think that the 12 million policyholders and beneficiaries who own or will benefit by Equitable Society life insurance policies will have a specially enjoyable vacation. Holidays unmarred by fears and worries. Through life insurance with the Equitable Society, they have safeguarded their homes, provided secure futures for themselves. So, for a carefree vacation, for a worry-free holiday, better get in touch with your Equitable Society representative before you go. Tonight's FBI file, The Unhappy Hijacker. Last year, there were more than a million and a half major crimes committed in the United States. Of the people arrested for those crimes, more than half had previous arrest records. And some of those arrested had records which covered many pages, many states, and many years. They are the professional criminals. The ones to whom a previous sentence is merely an interruption of their careers. They're driven on by many complex usages. But the basic ingredient behind their continuance as criminals is that they are sure they won't make the same mistake again. The mistake that resulted in their previous capture, arrest, and imprisonment. They're confident that their experience has made them smarter than all the police in the world. And when they have achieved that state of illusion, no crime is beyond them. Armed robbery, arson, or even murder. Tonight's FBI file opens in a comfortable frame house located in a large city in one of our Midwestern states. One of the occupants of this dwelling, and Mrs. Johnson, is just answering the front doorbell. Yes? Hello, Mrs. Johnson. Hello. I'm Mildred Phelps, remember me? Yes. I, um, I talked to Mr. Johnson before I made an appointment to see him. I know. Well, can I come in? Come ahead. Thanks. He's out in the greenhouse. Follow me. Okay. I haven't seen you for a long time, Mrs. Johnson. I know. How have you been? My husband's in here. George? Yes, Mama? Here's your company. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, thanks. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Hello there, Mildred. Hey, this is really a layout. The greenhouse? Yeah, look at those orchids. I have over a dozen species here. This is my hobby. I spend a great deal of time with them. No wonder nobody sees you anymore. Well, I'm pretty much out of action these days. Completely out? No. Excuse me a second, Lola. This orchid needs a little attention. Mr. Johnson, I have something I think will interest you. What is it? Did you read this morning's paper? Uh-huh. You see the story about a truckload of whiskey being hijacked? Yes, yes, I did. That's why I'm here. Well, what's the story? I know who knocked it off. And I know where it's stored. Well? If I told you how you could get it, how much would the information be worth? Uh, you want me to take it from the person who hijacked? Well, it wouldn't be the first time, would it, George? No. There's 300 cases, high-grade scotch. What's my cut? Well, in the past, I've always paid $10 a case. You've got a deal. Oh, wait a minute. I want to find out a few things first. Where is the stuff? How do I get it? I'll call you this afternoon and give you all the dope. Uh, who am I taking it from? Does that matter? Yes. Look, I'd rather not tell. Oh, Mildred, I have to know who did the job. 
Okay. It's Paul Carter. What? Well, he's your boyfriend. He was my boyfriend. Oh. So that's it. Yeah. Dirty pool, Mildred. He deserves it. Does it bother you? Not at all. In fact, I'd like to hand Paul one myself. I figured that. Well, how about it? I'll be glad to do business with you. Well, Paul, that's the story. And the sucker fell for it, huh? Real big. Good. Now, suppose you tell me what this is all about. Well, to coin a phrase, I'm uh, killing two birds with one stone. What do you mean? That truck I hijacked was awful hot. I got to get rid of it. So I'm going to let Mr. Johnson take it off my hand. But, honey, what about the whiskey? I've already taken that out, but I've left the empty cases. Oh. Where is the stuff? I took it to that building I rented over on 12th Street. I see. What's the other bridge you're killing? George Johnson. I've owed him one for a long time. But how are you getting even? He still winds up with a truck. He winds up with trouble. How? I know pretty much how he operates. When he gets the truck tonight, he'll drive it right to his house. It'll be too late for him to unload it until morning. Hmm. By that time, I'll uh, have called the cops. Oh. And they pick him up for the hijack. Right. Oh, that's very cute. <laughs> what do I say to the guy when I call him? Uh, I give him the address where the truck is. They can get in through a window at the back. Tell him nobody will be there between 10 and 12 tonight. Okay. Oh, uh, and uh, one other thing. Yeah? He promised you 10 bucks a case? That's right. Say you'll come around to his place at midnight to collect. Wait a minute. Suppose he finds out the truck is empty. Honey, it's all locked up, believe me. Won't find out till the morning. Meantime, he pays us three grand for the privilege of going to jail. In the same city at a nearby FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is just entering the office of the agent in charge. I see you, Mr. Morgan. Yes, come in, Jim. I've been waiting for you to come back to the office. Well, I've been caught all day. What's on your mind? I don't imagine you've had a chance to read the report on a hijacking that occurred last night. No, I haven't. A liquor truck was waylaid just across the state line. Just one man did the job. Oh? He overpowered the driver when he stopped for a traffic light on a lonely stretch of road. I see. The driver was severely beaten and left by the side of the road. Uh -huh. However, he managed to make his way to a nearby filling station and report the crime. Well, what time did all this happen? Well, the hijacking occurred at approximately 12.30 a.m., the driver reported it to the police about two hours later. Any leads? Yes, sir. The police checked with the toll booth on Midway Bridge as soon as they received the report. And? And they remembered the truck. It had passed through about an hour before. Then it came here to the city? Yes, sir. So they immediately sent out an alarm on it here. Any results? Well, a truck very much like it was spotted driving through the West End about 3 a.m. It disappeared, however, before it could be picked up. Mm. Any report on it since? No, sir. But we've set up a procedure that may bring some results. What's that? Well, the section where the truck was last seen is at the tip of that peninsula that juts out into the river. Yeah. Now, going on the theory that it found cover there someplace, we've blocked out the whole area. Fine. The police are cooperating with us, and we're going to search every building. Good, place. good. Uh, what about the driver? He's in the hospital, sir. Uh, could he give any description of the hijacker? No, not too good a one. The police have brought some pictures down to the hospital to him for him to look at. Fine, that's fine. I'll let you know, sir, if we get any results. <laughs> George. Yes, Mama. Are you getting ready to go out? Uh, yes. You promised to take me to the movies tonight. Oh, oh, that's right, I did. Well? Mama, I'm afraid we'll have to make it some other evening. Why? Well, tonight I have to go out on some business. I have a chance to make a very nice score. Mm -hmm. I heard of a truck full of liquor that's been hijacked. I was tipped off how to pick it up. I, I got to go over there right now. Wait a minute. Who tipped you off? Uh, Mildred Phelps. How did she know about it? Well, Paul Carter did the job. She goes with Paul Carter. Uh, she used to, Mama. That's all over. She's very mad at him. That's why she gave me the information. Now, I, I have to go Wait. over there. Sit down. But, Mama... Sit down, I said. Very well. Now, listen to me. I don't like that Mildred Phelps. 
And I don't trust her. Mama. Let me finish. Paul Carter's been an enemy of yours for years. It sounds to me as if they put their heads together and have come up with some scheme to get you in trouble. Well, how can that be? She told me where the truck is. I know. Well, then what can be wrong? George, take my word for it. They're up to something. Mama, I've got to go over there. This is too good to pass up. Very well. Go ahead. Be stubborn. But do me one favor. What's that? Check every detail of her story before you take that truck. Any news, Jim? Oh, hello, Mr. Morgan. I didn't think you'd be here this late. Any report on the hijacked truck? No, sir, not yet. What have you got there? Oh, this is a detailed map of the peninsula where the truck was last seen. Uh Uh-huh. Now, those white pins indicate every possible building in which the truck could have been stored. I see. And the blue pins here indicate places that have already been checked by the police. Uh Uh-huh. How many men have they got on the job? A detail of over two dozen, sir. Good, good. They've been calling in every hour all evening, giving their reports. Well, you're certainly doing a thorough job, Jim. Thank you, sir. Oh, say, uh, Hmm? the driver look over those pictures of suspects? Yes, sir. He picked out five men that might possibly have been his assailant. The police are rounding them up now. Yes, sir. Oh, excuse me. Surely. Special Agent Taylor. Oh, hello there, Sergeant. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good work. Will you let me have that address? Mm -hmm. Got it. Thanks a lot. I'll be right over. Well, sir, they found the truck. Fine. It's in a small garage on West Street. I'm going right over there. Mrs. Johnson. Come in. Thanks. Mr. Johnson get home yet? Yes, he's here. George? Yes, Mama? Your company's here again. Oh. Hello there, Mildred. Hiya, George. How'd everything go? Just fine. No trouble, huh? No trouble at all. Oh, that's swell. Well, you can pay me off then, if you will, and I'll be on my way. What's your hurry? Well, it's pretty late, you know. Let's have the dough, huh, George? I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, Mildred. What? There isn't going to be any payoff. What are you talking about? You got the truck, didn't you? No. I thought you said everything went okay. It did. But not the way you planned. What is this? Well, uh, before I went over for the truck tonight, I told my wife the whole story. So? Well, I don't like to say this, but at times, Mama has a very suspicious nature. She didn't believe your story. Now, look. Let me finish. She uh, warned me to proceed very cautiously, so when I went to the garage, I decided to examine the truck before I moved it out. Tell her what you found. There was no whiskey. The truck was empty. Well, I, I don't understand that. I think you do. Tell her the rest, George. Well, I realized then that Mama was right. Something was wrong. Look, I don't want to hear any more of this. He hasn't finished. I don't care. I'm getting out of here. Just stay where you are. Now, George, finish your story. Very well. You see, I decided to wait around the garage. I figured if it was a trap that Paul might drop by later to see if the truck was gone. (laughs) That's just what he did. Paul came in? Yes. What happened? We discussed the matter, and then I left him there. Left him. What he means is, your boyfriend, Paul, is dead. We will reopen tonight's FBI file in just a moment. Did you ever hear of a professional worry lifter? Hmm? What in the world is that? I mean a man whose life work is lifting the burden of worry from other people's shoulders. Not just a man who says, cheer up, everything is going to be all right, but a man who actually does something about it. Oh, sounds like a man worth knowing. He is. He's your equitable society representative. You'll find that if you have fears about your family's future, your equitable society representative will leave no stone unturned to do a complete job of worry lifting. For instance... Lots of husbands worry because no one ever told them about readjustment income. Readjustment income? 
What's that? The Equitable Society as Readjustment Income Plan provides extra income for the widow during the two toughest years, the two years immediately following her husband's death, years in which she is adjusting the family way of life to a lowered income. You know, expenses can't be reduced overnight. It takes time. And that's why every life insurance program should provide readjustment income for extra help during the two toughest years. As a matter of fact, the thought of those years has worried me. How much does one of those readjustment income plans cost? Why, it may not cost you a cent. It may require only a simple rearranging of your present life insurance program. In any event, the man to see is your professional worry lifter, your Equitable Society representative. Look in the phone book for the Equitable Life Assurance Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Unhappy Hijacker. Occasionally, there comes along a criminal who is so publicized as to make the public believe that they understand him. And understanding him, they are wont to sympathize. If you have ever been a victim of that kind of thinking, you have been experiencing the wrong emotion. The only feeling you should have for the professional criminal is one of revulsion. He is not a person whose mind you can understand because his life is built on moral standards that you know nothing about. Moral standards which not only condone, but approve. Lying, cheating, and above all, double-crossing. As you can see from tonight's case from the files of your FBI, they're all treacherous, evil people. And they want none of your sympathy or your friendship. Because to the criminal, you as a decent citizen represent only one thing, his next victim. Tonight's file continues the following morning at the FBI field office. Special Agent Jim Taylor is just making a report. Good morning, Mr. Morgan. Oh, good morning, Jim. Did you complete your investigation on that hijacking case last night? Well, no, sir. I'm sorry to say I didn't. What happened? I thought the police had located the truck. Oh, they did. Well? That only led to further complications. How do you mean? Well, let me give you the whole story. Yeah, go ahead. When I arrived at the garage, I learned that the police had found the body of a man named Paul Carter in the back of the truck. Paul Carter? Yes, he was a small-time racketeer and thief. One of the five suspects that the truck driver had identified from those pictures. Obviously, he was the right one. Yes, but that only complicated the case. How's that? The whiskey had been removed from the truck. Now, we searched the premises completely, but couldn't find any trace of it. Any lead on who killed Carter? No, sir, not yet. We found a window in the back of the garage that had been jimmied open. That was evidently how the killer came in. I see. There was a peculiar matted substance on the windowsill. It appeared to have come off the intruder's shoe. A matted substance? Yes, it resembled moss. I sent it on to the laboratory last night. We should have a report on it soon. Uh-huh. Say, this killer could have taken the whiskey. And that would keep us in the case. Yes, I know. Have the police checked on Carter's associates or enemies? Well, they're doing that now. They're also trying to learn where Carter lived, and as soon as they have any information, they'll get in touch with us. Good morning, Mildred. Oh, gosh, I forgot you can't talk with that gag at your mouth. Here, let me untie it for you. There we are. Did you have a good night? Now, what do you think? Oh, must be pretty uncomfortable. You can say that again. Why are you keeping me here? Well, uh, Mama and I had to have a little talk. We had to decide what we should do with you. Well? We're going to let you leave here. Oh. On one condition. What's that? If you tell us what Paul did with that whiskey. I, I don't know. Oh, Mildred, you must He know. didn't tell me anything about it. Now, please, tell the truth. You'll only make Mama mad at you all Mama, over. Mama, haven't you got anything to say around here? Of course. Well, I haven't noticed it. Everything you do is in order for Mama. That's not true. George. Yes? Why do you let her run your life? Why don't you get smart? You're clever, attractive. Why don't you act like a man? Mildred. I mean it. Look, baby, if you just let me leave here, I'll... Mildred, pick on somebody your own size. Mama, I've just been asking her about the whiskey. Leave me alone with her. 
I'll get the information. Mr. Morgan. Yes, Jim. A report just came in from the laboratory on that substance I found at the scene of the killing. Oh, what was it? Well, they describe it as a plant called fern root. It's a species of moss. I see. They also said that it's not native to this section. It's found mostly in the eastern states. Oh, that's strange. You say you believe it came from the killer's shoe? That's right, sir. There was a suggestion of a heel imprint on it. That's where I got that idea. You keep coming up with puzzlers on this one, don't you? <laughs> oh, by the way, a list of Paul Carter's enemies just came in. There's uh, 22 names on it. Mm-hmm. Quite a roster. Mm-hmm. Won't be easy to pick any individual out of that. No. Police are cooperating with our agents, checking up on the men, finding out about their backgrounds, when they saw Carter last. And... Uh, excuse me, Jim. Certainly, sir. Morgan speaking. Yes, he is. Yeah? Yes. Uh, Jim. Sir? Uh, copy down this address. All right. Uh, go ahead. 228 North Adams Street. I have it, sir. We have it. Yes, yes, he will. Goodbye. That was police headquarters, Jim. No. That address I just gave you is where Paul Carter lived. I told the police you'd be right over there. George? Yes, Mama? You can come in here now. Very well. How did you make out? I got the information. Good for you. What did you do to her? Never mind. Found out where the whiskey is. Where? Tell him. Tell him, I said. It's in a building over on 12th Street. Give him the address. Number 741. 300 cases are there? Yes. Look at her. Isn't so pretty now, is she? Mama, I never thought she was pretty. You could have, if I hadn't come in. Oh, stop. I'll go get the stuff right away. That's a good idea. What about me? Can I go now? No. But you said I... You're staying here until my husband gets back with the whiskey. I want to be sure you told us the truth. Morgan, I'm a little ashamed to be coming in like this again. What do you mean, Jim? I have to report another failure. What is it this time? Well, I went to the place where Carter lived. It was a small apartment downtown. Yeah? The police had already arrived there. They'd searched his effects. They found a rental receipt for a small building over on 12th Street. In Carter's name? That's right, sir. We went over there and found that it was the place he had used to store the liquor. Had used? Yes. By the time we got there, it was gone. Well, how did you know it had been there? Well, there were several boxes and a few broken bottles of the same brand that Carter had hijacked. Oh. Well, does that mean he moved it to another place before he was killed? I don't think so. Why not? A truck had just recently been driven into the building. We could still smell the exhaust fumes. Oh. Mr. Morgan, I have an idea that whoever killed Carter is the same person that came and took away the whiskey. What do you base that on, Jim? Well, I found several particles of what appeared to be that same matted substance that I picked up on the windowsill back at the garage. The fern root? Yes. I dropped it off the laboratory. They're going to make a quick comparison. Oh. You say a truck was used? That's right, sir. Were there any tire impressions? No, sir, there weren't. It was a concrete floor, no moisture. Oh. Now, come in. Excuse me, sir. And what is it, Tom? I have a report from the laboratory. It's for Jim. Oh, let me have it, huh? There you are. Thanks, Tom. Right. Is that a report on the second fern root sample, Jim? Um, yes, sir. It's the same substance. Something else, too. What? The laboratory says that fern root is used in the growing of orchids. Hey, wait a minute. What are you looking for? That list of Carter's enemies. I think it'll tell us who the killer is. That you, George? Yes, Mama. Right in here. Uh Uh-huh. How'd you make out? Fine. How many cases were there? 300, just like she said. What'd you do with it? It's out back in the shed. Oh, I'm tired. It's been a busy day. Yeah. Did you keep supper for me? Mm, It's all ready. Good. Oh, where's Mildred? Next room. Well, I guess you can let her go now. Are you serious? Well, that's what you promised her. Only to find out where the liquor was. 
can't let her go. She tell the police about your killing Paul. Oh. Oh, that's right. What else can we do with her? That's pretty obvious, isn't it? Kill her, too? Of course. I see. When? Right now. Before supper? Yes. Very well. You set out the food. This won't take... What is that? My greenhouse. Someone broke a window. George. My orchids, Mama. My orchids. Oh, look. The glass door is broken. I had to break it, Johnson. Who are you? Special agent of the FBI. What? I want to talk to you about a case of whiskey and murder. George Johnson was turned over to state authorities, convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to be executed. Mrs. Johnson was given a life sentence as an accomplice. And thus, another cluster of criminal careers was brought to a close, mainly because of the fine work done by your FBI's special laboratory. 1947's crop of criminals includes those who have taken advantage of modern inventions. And no law enforcement agency could cope with them unless it, too, used the aid of science in its investigations. The night's case involved the use of the spectroscope, one of the many machines which are at work even now at Washington, D.C., in the laboratory of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. At work for you and for your FBI. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Now, Mr. Keating, uh, let me see if I have this Equitable Society Readjustment Income Plan straight. As I understand it, this plan would give my wife extra income during the first two years after my death. That's right, Jim. Extra cash every month for two years to give her time to adjust her expenses to a new standard of living. Knowing my wife was going to get that would surely take a load off my mind. Then let me suggest that you get in touch with your Equitable Society representative without delay. Let him show you how little it costs to provide your wife with equitable readjustment income. Call your Equitable representative soon. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the red-headed blackmailer. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The red-headed blackmailer on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>